Education. We all have a stake and interest in education. Whether as students, teachers, parents, even employers, it's in all of our interests that education is of a high standard. But despite all the focus of raising standards and changing educational pedagogy, we often fail to stop and ask ourselves something that seems quite simple. And that's, what is the purpose of education? Not on an individual level, not passing exams and getting to the next level, getting a good job, but the purpose of education as a whole, on a societal and global scale. Why do schools exist? Why does education exist? It's actually not such an easy question when you stop and think about it. I'll come back to it later. In the meantime, I'm going to give you a little insight into who I am, and why I've become absolutely fascinated by the idea of education and its global purpose. Three years ago, I arrived here in Bangkok at this successful international school. And I was very keen to make a good first impression. So I readily volunteered to help facilitate the student council. Now, having done this before in a previous school, where every week I would turn up and have the children complain about either school dinners or school uniform, I was reluctant to face another year of the same mundane complaining. So I decided to do something a little different. I enrolled the school as an eco-school, and I turned up armed with this new initiative for some of the student council members who were interested to form kind of a breakaway team. And so three members of the student council joined me to form the first eco-team at the school. Over the next few years, we went from three members of the student council to a 50-member strong eco-team, with students from 5 to 18. Around the same time, the United Nations launched their Global Sustainability Goals, 17 sustainability goals towards a better future for our planet and for future generations. They identified education as absolutely key in meeting these goals and targets. I'm sure you'll all agree that's absolutely right. So with this in mind, and with the eco-team fully underway, I decided to do my best to embed these sustainability issues and education for sustainability into my teaching practice and into my wider reach within the school community. When you talk about behavioral change, as an educator, information is kind of my business. So my idea is always stand up and teach my way to change. I was going to stand up and present scary statistics, data, information, and open the eyes of my students so that they would behave accordingly. They would change the way they're behaving, and they would suddenly, all of them, behave in a very environmentally friendly and global sustainability mindset. This was an incorrect approach for two reasons. First of all, the students on my eco-team, it became very apparent, even after the very first meeting, they did not need their minds changing. They did not need their eyes opening. They did not need to be awakened to this sustainability threat we face. In the same way that studies have shown that happiness is directly related to time spent in nature, it became very apparent to me that young people have an innate understanding when the world around them, when nature around them, is not happy. They walk down the street, they see the litter. They can feel the pollution. They can identify inequality all around them. The second reason that simple information delivery and awareness was not an effective strategy is because it rarely is. As far as creating genuine behavioral change, information and awareness has time and time again proven ineffective. It's why people still smoke. It's why not everybody wears their seatbelt. And it's why, despite warnings and requests at the start, at least three mobile phones have gone off this evening. Simply raising awareness and telling people how to behave doesn't work. So what does? As we've seen tonight, and as we've seen in many, many TED Talks 
in the past, education is at something of a crossroads. The most viewed TED talk of all time comes from Sir Ken Robinson, where he looks at schools, modern education, and how creativity is the key to 21st century education. When you do a little further research, you see other TED Talks and other educational pedagogy that focuses around these skills that are vital in a 21st century world. Skills like creativity, innovation, adaptability, problem solvers, independent learners. These are all things that, as an education professional, I've become more and more familiar with. I believe most of us are doing our best to embed these skills and attributes within our students. I know we certainly are at my school. And so I decided to approach my teaching of education for sustainability with this in mind. I decided to make it as child-led as humanly possible. And so, in stepping back, I didn't become some kind of wonder teacher who brought out all these amazing attributes in the young people that I was working with. Far from it, I did very little. I'll rephrase that, I did basically nothing. I simply turned up each week and provided a platform and an opportunity for the young people I work with to demonstrate their 21st century skills. Not information regurgitation, not standardized assessments, but simply a platform for them to demonstrate their genuine leadership skills, the organic teamwork. It worked. While some of the initiatives and ideas the young people had naturally fell flat. Many, many didn't. In fact, looking back over my time as EcoSchools coordinator here, it became apparent that everything that was successful had been entirely the students' ideas. As a result, we earned international accreditation, awards and recognition. We've become the first school in all of Thailand to become a green flag eco-school. It became very apparent to me that the ultimate context for these 21st century skills was in terms of real-world 21st century problem-solving, that is, education for sustainability. Often you'll hear people talk about how, as teachers and educators, we're preparing students for jobs that don't yet exist. Well, I believe we're also training them to face problems that have not yet been realized. Albert Einstein said, you cannot solve a problem with the same mindset that created it. In presenting 21st century education in anything other than education for sustainability, we run the risk of using the same tools towards, sorry, different tools towards the same end. What I'm saying is, if we simply use 21st century skills in order to reach the same mindless consumption, blind economic growth, then sustainability issues such as those raised by the United Nations will not be addressed. Dr. Stephen Schein carried out some research where he interviewed many of the leading sustainability leaders currently working in industry and big business and even politics today. He interviewed these sustainability leaders, these inspirational people that are doing such amazing things, and he identified that they did not have any skills or knowledge or information that you or I do not possess already. What they did have was what he refers to as an ecological worldview. An ecological worldview that was created at a point, either in early childhood or early in their careers, that changed their mindsets, that made them approach everything they do, not in terms of financial gain, but with a sustainability mindset. The question I have is, imagine if we could create a whole generation with these kinds of sustainability mindsets. Having seen 21st century skills and education 
being so successful in administering education for sustainability, I would argue now that the only context for 21st century skills is in terms of education for sustainability. I asked uh, my class, I, I teach 11-year-olds, I have 22 10 and 11-year-olds in my class, and I asked them, what, what is education for? What is the bigger purpose of education? Of those 22, 18 mentioned education either in the context of problem solving or changing the world. Nelson Mandela said, that education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. And so returning to my original question of what is the bigger picture global purpose of education, I think it might be about providing the skills, the attributes, but most importantly, the mindsets and worldviews so that young people can make change towards a sustainable future. Thank you very much.